A wonderful inaugural speech, Mr. President. I must say, I've been working here at the White House for a very long time, and I've seen many inaugurations, and yours was a true celebration. Thank you, Charles, but I'm still getting used to being called Mr. President. Well, you earned it after that hard-fought election campaign. Yep, now I'm excited to get to work, fulfilling my campaign promises, ending the illegitimate wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, closing Guantanamo, and launching a genuine investigation into torture, spying on Americans, and the financial scandals. And I will actually hold these people to account. And once that's done, then we can focus on getting universal health care for all Americans. There's a lot to do, and I'm ready to get this country back on track. What's next on today's agenda? Well, let's see. Michelle and the girls have gone back to their rooms to get ready for tonight's inaugural ball. You have a brief meeting, and then you can get ready, too. Fine. Who's the meeting with? I'm not at liberty to say, but I can tell you that all new presidents have to take this meeting as part of their indoctrination into office. All right. Where is this meeting? You just go down that dark corridor and through those doors. Aren't you coming with me? No, you have to do this alone. Thank you for your help, Charles, and I'll see you soon. Well, it's completely dark in here. Hello? Yes, Mr. President. We are here. Please, have a seat in the illuminated chair. Well, with the light in my eyes, I can't see anything. Precisely. We hope you might understand that protecting our identities is as much for your safety as it is for ours. Why? Who are you? The few who know of our existence have given us many different names, but we prefer to remain ambiguous. Let's just say we represent a controlling interest in every major American institution. The military and defense contractors, the banks, the stock market, media, energy, insurance, pharmaceuticals, and so on. And what do you want with me? We come to you with both a great opportunity and a grave warning. You see, the job of the executive branch has changed drastically over the past 50 years, when it was decided that the ability to change and dictate the direction of our nation was too much power for one man to hold, especially if that man did not want to cooperate. I'm sure you came to this office with a lot of ideas, a lot of things you wanted to change. But let me assure you, we are quite happy with the way things are going now, and we would like to see them continue. But the job of the presidency is still vital. He reassures the people that everything is okay, even when it's not. He takes a public stand for noble ideas, even when he knows it's a lost cause. And he's the spokesman for freedom and democracy, even when that's not what we are practicing. And this is why we selected you to win this election. For your charisma and your charm, and with the help of our media promotion, you have become the beacon of hope and change for the disenfranchised masses that we need to be pacified. Do this for us, and you and your family will become American royalty, protected and provided for by us, the true power elite who really run this country. Do this for us, and you'll be remembered forever in the annals of history as a great American leader. Speaking hypothetically, what if I instead serve the will of the American people and fight for true justice, equality, and peace? Lower the screen. There were others before you who tried to defy us. Roll the film. This is a movie we shot back in 1963 in Dallas, Texas. From this view, you can clearly see the book depository in the background as the president's motorcade enters what we call the kill zone. Watch the bottom of the screen and you can see the rifle barrel come up and fire the fatal headshot there. Raise the screen. So I hope you understand that we can take away power just as easily as we give it. And before you consider self-sacrifice for the good of the country, you should know that your wife and children will also be under constant Secret Service protection. But if something should happen to you, we cannot guarantee your family's safety from all the low nuts out there. Am I being perfectly clear? Yes, I understand you. Please understand, it's not personal. This is business, and we would much rather have your cooperation than to let things get ugly. Would you agree? Well, it seems I have little choice other than to agree. Thank you for your time, Mr. President. You will not be hearing from us again. But you will receive a periodic agenda through your handlers. We look forward to a productive and lucrative relationship with you. 
Your success and your survival depend on it. A politician enters office under a lot of pressure to fulfill a lot of promises made on the campaign trail. And when they fail to deliver on those promises, we must wonder if it's because they never intended to change things or if they're locked into a system that prevents things from changing. <laughs>